What's going on, everybody? Uh, I had an interesting phone call today with an orthopedic surgeon. Now, I do this. I have I have a lot of conversations with people who maybe have an injury on their dirt bike. I had an injury. Uh, so over six years ago, I tore my ACL one day riding a trials bike, of all things. We were just messing around um, at a quarry, a rock quarry. And I had a tip over and uh, posted my foot out and popped my ACL um, in my right knee. And I have a lot of people reach out and ask me about braces, like knee braces, and what do I recommend, and do I think that everyone should be using braces, and what brace should I buy, and all this stuff. And I can only exp I can only kind of elaborate on my experience. And a lot of you guys maybe don't even 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 know or remember. So I tore my ACL. I had reconstructive surgery on that, and then I was using a knee brace. I ended up buying. Uh, getting custom fitted for the Don Joy A22 braces. It's braces you'd see like a quarterback in college or something wear, uh, like, a, you know, in football or something like that, or running backs. Although, I don't know that that many of these quarterbacks are using braces, but if they did, that's kind of what they would wear. So I ended up getting it for both sides, like both of my knees, and it was expensive. It was 900 back. This is six years ago, and it was $900 per brace. And I wore those braces on every ride, for about two years and then slowly i started wearing them less and less but i never really knew if that was really saving me and i was talking with this orthopedic surgeon today and he's been doing this for 30 years and he's like he wasn't 100 percent sure that they do a whole lot of good either there's just not a lot of data out there that says one way or the other um and one of the reasons why i stopped wearing my braces after a few years is just I just felt like my legs were getting stronger and stronger and the braces were restricting my movement and I kind of hated that. I hated the restriction of the movement. There was so much material bunching up on the back of my le in the back of my knees because I would wear like a I wear like a sleeve under the brace, uh, you know, on the top of my skin like a, a base layer and then the brace over the top of that. And there's just a it just makes for a lot of material bunched up there. The end, the the backs of your you know your pant legs and all these things. Anyway, it became very very uncomfortable to to ride. And after a couple of years, I just I, I decided I'm not going to do this anymore. Now, for the first you know that first year or so, those braces were really good for me psychologically. And I think the braces probably did the most amount of good from a psychological perspective. I don't know if they actually would have saved me for anything. Like, I don't think I've really ever had any time where I might have injured myself other than the time that I did injure myself. Because on like, even if you look at this, like on this ride, this wasn't even a long ride, but I, you know, ride from the, the staging area up to the top of this peak. And then I ride back down. It happens over the course of an hour, two hours, three hours, four hours, five hours. And your brace, if your brace, even, even if your brace fits you perfectly, as you go throughout your ride, it's going to slide down. It's going to change positions. And if the brace isn't fitting you in the exact right spot, and it's not essentially perfectly fitting you, it's not going to help. Like, their effect of a brace is... It, I'm not saying it doesn't help, but what I'm saying is its effect is possibly marginal. And if it's not in the right spot, its effect is not even... It, 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 you probably wouldn't even be able to measure it. So as you go throughout a ride and that brace maybe starts to slide down, I think you'd have to be like taking your riding pants off every 20 minutes to adjust the brace if you wanted it to be in the right spot. Now, I don't, I'm not going to get into an argument. That was just my experience. And I had custom fitted braces um, that were you know, perfectly fitted to my knee. And then as I got going or as, I, as time has gone on, I've just worked on strength. And I've done, I've strengthened my legs, I've strengthened the, the muscles surrounding my knees, and I think that's the best way to go for me. And so if you have had an injury, like an, a, an ACL injury, where you've had to have reconstructive surgery or anything like that, and you want to have a conversation about how it went, give me a call. Like, my best advice to you is really just going to be to focus on your on your physical training, like your, your PT a lot and try to get the range of motion back as soon as you can after surgery. And also just stay positive. Like it's, I'm, I'm six years past my ACL reconstruction and my knee is great. Still, I think it's better than the other side. The one that was reconstructed, it feels solid. I haven't had any pain and maybe I'm one of the lucky ones. I don't know, but I feel like the, you know, the technology for this stuff is getting better and better and better. And there's nothing 
you know, there's nothing in our lives that is without any risk. And I love dirt biking and I, I have loved it. You know, I, I'm probably, I'm definitely, I've kind of gotten into a stage the last little while where I'm not taking nearly as many risks. I'm not riding as much quote hard enduro or soft enduro. I've just haven't been able to do that as much. And I don't ride as much as I used to, but I still enjoy it. And I don't wear braces anymore. I still run a knee, a kneecap protector, like a shin guard um, and a kneecap guard. Uh, but I don't run braces and I haven't for quite a while. Um, but I did for that first couple of years. And it was a lot of that was just mainly, I feel like for the psychological benefit, because the actual bracing benefit of the brace might have been quite marginal. And I, I had spent a lot of money on my braces. So I would never criticize anybody for deciding to run a knee brace. Um, I don't criticize people for deciding to run neck braces. I've run, uh, I've, I've used one neck brace um, throughout my time. And that was just, it was when it was attached to the Liat um, chest protector, it had an integrated neck brace. I just kind of dealt with it when I was using that. I never really loved it. And I never had any crashes or anything that I think probably would have been detrimental to my neck with that, but I didn't love the fact that I couldn't see with that. I couldn't move my head around and I prefer to ride without one, you know? So I'm riding dirt bikes completely unbraced, no neck braces, no knee braces. And that's how, that's how I've done it. Um, as some of you guys know, I had a crash about a month ago or so where it was pretty hard crash, gave myself a pretty good whack on the head. Wasn't even, wasn't filming it. Didn't have a camera with me. Um, had to retire that helmet and then I got a new helmet. And this, this ride here that I'm on is actually the only time I've used the helmet because I've only done one ride since the crash. It's just with the way that single dad life has gone and everything. This is the one and only ride that I've been on, I guess, since that crash. But anyway, I just thought I would kind of share the story again about my, you know, my run here with neck braces. Now, this bike that I'm riding is a sweepstakes bike. I'm giving this bike away October. Well, the sweepstakes closes for this bike October 15th. So if you want to get entered for that, um, I would encourage you to do so. It ends at midnight. If you go to my website, dirtbikechannel.com, any purchase that you make over there automatically enters you into the drawing for this bike. And then also if you use my links to Rocky Mountain ATV, it enters you to win the bike as well. So, you know, there's not that many things that I have for sale on my website, just a few shirts and things like that. Uh, but if you click on my link for Rocky Mountain ATV, you can buy anything they sell and it's dollar for dollar um, over there at Rocky Mountain ATV, get you entered to win this bike as well. So that's what I've got for you guys. Um, I'll cut you guys loose and let you just kind of listen to the bike on the way down. Um, I am using a different camera, so I don't have a microphone in my helmet. At least, uh, I don't have that sorted out yet. Uh, so you'll just be listening to the bike, but I'm just going to run down this mountain here. So I appreciate all you guys. Appreciate all the support. If you want to, if you want to schedule a call with me to chat about any of this stuff over my website, dirtbikechannel.com, there's a contact form and you can actually just set up an appointment. We can just have a, you've, I, you can either email me or we can set up a call to just get on there and chat for, you know, 10 or 15 minutes and answer your questions. So hopefully you guys are having a good day and uh, until next time, leave us in the track. Thanks.